So in this video, we'll go through writing of a, of a program and some of the programming structures and whatnot. Here we've created a, a couple points. However, like points are kind of like one of the most basic uh, parts of a pro or program. So to do a little bit of program editing, a few things that, that we'll do here and a few things that I kind of always do whenever I do programs. Uh, we'll come over here, we'll hit these like next button. You can use the next button down here on a regular teach pendant. So you're gonna go to this EDCMD, which stands for edit command. We're gonna use the insert function. Notice you have like delete, copy, find, replace. You can do some other functionality there. So we'll do insert. How many lines do you wanna insert? I always like to create a nice gap. So I'm gonna say five lines, enter. So I just created five lines. Also, I don't like the like points of the program to be congested by uh, on the bottom side either. So I'll also do edit command, insert, five lines. Just because I like, I just like having the space to be able to do stuff. Because if like this, now I can add instructions here, I can add instructions here, you know. And another programming practice that's good to do is leave lines open. So like if these are my approach positions, maybe I would do like this and I would add a comment. I'll just go ahead and add a comment just to show you that. Uh, so I need to switch this to instruction. Your instruction button might be in a different location uh, based on your teach pendant that you have. So we'll go instruction and then we'll go to comment uh, with, I believe it's miscellaneous, miscellaneous. So we're in the miscellaneous statements and then we'll go, I believe it's remark. So now we have a remark here, hit enter. So I, I created a remark right here, which the remark is the comment. So from here, I'll hit enter. And so you can manually punch in. A lot of the old robots, this is how you had to do it, was the only way to do it. This is like the old cell phone method of like punching in uh, a name for something. So we would call this like, I'm just gonna abbreviate this and we'll just say pick. Right, and when I say pick, it means pick position, right? And you might see this, people will shorthand program something like this, where they'll say pick, and then you'll see something that says place, or you may see something that says approach, right? So I'll just call a pick, and then we, we have our approach and our pick position in this, this same uh, program. So all this did was give, give us a comment. This has no functionality to it, other than for the human to be able to read something. That way, whenever you whenever you come through here and you're reading this program, you're not just looking at points and just trying to have to guess what every single thing is. So commenting is very important to, for being like a good programmer. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that don't do a good job at this, and uh, it makes it hard for like the next guy who comes along who has to program on their system. So like really commenting your logic and and and, and writing your logic where it's spaced out nicely and, and very organized is one of the things that really differentiates a, a good programmer from a not good programmer. So now we'll go into just some other type of instruction things. I don't have uh, really anything exactly in mind, but I'll add one of the first things that you kind of learn in every single program, which will be your, your jump and your label, okay? So this gives you the ability to loop and, and move around within a program and we'll go through this explanation as I add these things. So I'll put label at the top. I always put, so your, uh, this will be considered like the main loop for, for our example right now. So while doing a main loop, I always use the number 10 because it's not the very beginning of the program, but it's at the top of the program. And I'll, and I'll give you an example of that here in a second. Maybe, and I will add here in a few minutes, I'll add some more instructions up here, right? And that's why this is a label 10, because there are gonna be some things above the label 10, but there won't be many things above the label 10. I'll just put a couple things above the label 10 uh, to maybe we have to do some things before the program runs. Maybe we need to open the gripper. We need to make sure the gripper's open. So you'll always like do things like that to make sure the gripper's open, because you don't wanna ever go down to a position, your gripper's closed and you just smash into whatever you're, you're gonna do. So we, we call these like a knit type of things. And knit means to initiate, or to get into a good starting position. So we have a label there. I'll do uh, instruction. I'll go back to the jump label thing again. And then we'll do this one as a jump label. 
Okay, we're also gonna name this one 10. At this point in time, what we've created here is an infinite loop. Meaning, as soon as the code runs and it passes this label 10, it will always run in a loop right here. And what do I mean by that? Oh, we'll just do it through the brief, brief example. So I'm in step mode so that way you guys can watch this program run. I'll say shift forward. It says, do you want to start from this line? I actually don't. I'm going to let it take me to back to the top of the program. So I'll say no. It brought me to the top of the program. And I'm going to slowly forward through this program in step mode so you can walk, so you can see the, uh, the, the code execute. So here, so another robot's going to move to that position. Robot's going to move to the next position. Also, one thing that I left out in the other video is we didn't do a uh, away from position, which in a ra away from is generally a repeat of your approach position. So whenever you go down to something, you need to go back up to something at the exact same position. Uh, so in that instance, like I could, I could just like copy this. Like I can actually do like this uh, point. So notice how I just created another point where I'm currently at in space. Now watch this. I'm gonna change this to a one. So I'm gonna change this three right here to a one. Boom. Now, these two positions here are exactly identical with one another. Position one and position one are the same position. I'm gonna change this back to linear too, because it should be linear. Does that make sense? So instead of me creating a, a third position that is the same values as, the, as this other position, I just said make them the same position. So that way if I modify this, like if I do a direct entry right now, it'll modify both the positions. Or it'll modify both of these. The reason why it's set up like this is because you actually probably want it set up like this way, because this speed is when you're going to that position. So when you go to the above position, you can go fast, right? And then you're gonna go down. Uh, you're gonna go down slower to at 100 millimeters a second. And then whenever you go up, you're also leaving that fixturing and everything still. So you wanna go up kind of slow, at least till you've cleared everything. And then you can, uh, you know, then you can retract more quickly. Okay, going back to the execution of this program itself, Forward. Do you want to start? I'm gonna say no. When I say no, it's gonna take me to back to where I was at in the program. So that's where it took me. Okay. I was already there, and we'll run through this again. So I'm just forwarding, just forwarding, just forwarding. Boom. Jump to label 10. It jumped to the label 10. Okay. I'm gonna run through it again. So we're at the above position. We're at the position. Now we're back at the above position again. Okay. Um, again, run it through the code, jump to label 10. We jump to the label 10. So whenever you guys were executing your programs at four, it would always get to the end and it would just stop. And then you wouldn't do nothing else. You had to go start back over at the top again. But this automa auto automatically takes you back to the top. So that way when the robot's in auto, it's performing that motion over and over and over again. So this is one of the first things that kind of you, you'll learn is just a, a jump to label and label. Boom, very simple. There's not any decision making going on here. And what I mean by decision making is there's no if anything. It's gonna get to this line, it's gonna execute the thing, right? Now, I'm gonna leave that jump there. I'm gonna create another instruction and give you an example of how something like this might work. So let's do an if statement. And let's say yes. Also, uh, instead of deleting, I can also just write an instruction over top of it again. Do you wanna delete the lines? I'm gonna say no. But you can just delete it if you wanna just delete it. Shift button held down, no. Uh, so I can just write an instruction over top of it again. So go back to instruction, go back to the if statement. The thing that I want to call out here in this if statement, I almost never use any of these if statements here. I just use this bottom if statement. 
this bottom if statement, the significance of it is you build the if statement. Meaning I can make this bottom if statement be any of these if statements. But if I choose one of these if statements, I can't modify it after I choose it. So that's one thing I don't like about it. The second thing is too, and this is the mo most major reason why I use this bottom if statement. This bottom if statement will give you more executable items. So the list in which this gives you the ability to do will be less than the list of the things that this gives you to do. And I'll, I'll hopefully I can show that in an example here. So I'll say if, let's say, register, we'll use a register, and I'll just say uh, register one, maybe something's there or not, I don't know. So if register one uh, is equal to a constant, constant means a number, you then have to signify what that number is. So I'll say five, okay? Jump to label, I'll say 10. Okay, and I'm also gonna, again, I like the good programming practice here. Uh, add a command, one, insert one. I want gaps between things. I don't want things on top of each other unless they're supposed to be on top of each other. If something's, these are all on top of each other because they're a piece together of, of code. So also this will make it this easier for me to demonstrate. So this makes a decision. This if statement makes a decision. So if register one is equal to five, jump to label 10. So let's just run through the program and just see how it reacts. And by the way, this is like one of the best ways to like teach yourself how to program. Because if you can plug these things in and then you can run through the program and you'll see how it reacts. And then you'll say, well, why did it not do like the thing that I thought it was gonna do? And then from there, you can kind of self-teach yourself and explore and then see like, oh, that's why I didn't do the thing, you know. Again, just move through the positions, bop, bop, bop. Now we're gonna go to this if statement. Now I'm about to execute this if statement. It did not jump to label 10, okay? Obviously, this one's gonna jump to label 10 because there's no decision being made. 